This video is brought to you by Moft. When I buy a new Mac, there are some essential settings I change uh, and features that I activate as soon as I get it. And I do this to add functionality, improve performance, and also save battery. Now today I'm gonna share each of these with you along with my top tips and tricks along the way. So to start, uh, let me show you the top settings to change. Uh, so first we're gonna open up system settings. Now we can do this by either going to the Apple logo in the top left side of the screen and clicking on system settings or a quick way to search for an app or anything on your Mac uh, is to use the spotlight function. Now to access this, you can press the uh, keyboard shortcut command plus space, and this will let us search for any app, including system preferences and launch it from there. Now that we're in system settings, we'll first set up what are called hot corners. Now to do this uh, in the desktop and dock, scroll down to where you find hot corners. Now hot corners uh, essentially let you assign an action to each of the corners of your display. For example, I set my bottom left corner to activate mission control to quickly see all my open apps and then I set the bottom right corner to see the desktop. Super simple and easy to use. My only advice though is to not use the top corners only because this is where uh, the menu bar is and I find it sometimes easy to accidentally trigger a hot corner when I'm clicking around the menu so therefore I just use the bottom left uh, and bottom right corners. And then in the same desktop and dock page, you can also change the position of the dock. Now, I like to have mine at the bottom, but if say you're often working in documents or emails, uh, having the dock off to the side of the display will leave more vertical screen space for those apps. And you can also choose to hide the dock entirely and only show when you hover over the area with your mouse. Oh, and by the way, uh, this is also where you can change your default browser. Now, I know many people like to use Chrome. Personally, I prefer Safari for its speed and layout, but I'll talk more about how I optimize Safari in a sec. Okay, let's now move on to the display. Now, first is scaling, uh, and scaling really refers to how big or how small everything is on your display. Now, by default, this will be set to around the middle, uh, but if, say, you have seeing difficulties, you may wanna use a larger scale, which will mean bigger text and icons. However, it will also result in effectively having less screen space uh, as less text can be shown at a time. On the other hand, to maximize your screen space, you can also choose to use a smaller scale. Uh, and this may be useful if say you're running multiple apps side by side uh, or writing out long pages of text, but you'll need better eyesight than me. Beneath that, we also find an option to toggle auto brightness. Now, generally speaking, I suggest you keep this on as it is good for saving battery. However, uh, as someone who edits videos every day, I like my display to be consistent. So I choose to keep this off. And the same goes for True Tone. Now, turning this on will make your display a bit warmer as it adapts to the lighting around you. And this is great for viewing comfort, uh, especially in the evenings. But since it does alter the display's color, uh, you don't wanna use this while editing photos or videos. But I will say though, uh, when working on documents or emails in the evening, this is especially nice to have. Let's now optimize the trackpad. So in the main settings page, uh, you wanna scroll down to where you see trackpad. And first you can actually change how firm or light you want the click to be. Now, personally, I set mine to a lighter click as I just find it to feel faster to operate. But if you find yourself accidentally, say unintentionally clicking, uh, you may wanna set it to a more firm click. Two other small but crucial settings to change here are one, activate tap to click, which means you don't have to click to actually tap. Uh, and two is to activate the secondary click or a right click by actually pressing the bottom right of the trackpad. I really don't understand why these two especially aren't on by default. Now let's move to battery settings. To check your battery health, click on the eye and your battery health will be shown as a percentage. Now anything above 80% is considered normal uh, and typically speaking, once you reach below 80% is when you're gonna start to see your battery performance lessen. Uh, but there are ways to preserve your battery health. You wanna make sure that optimized battery charging is on and this is essentially gonna adapt the charging schedule to match your routine uh, and therefore lessen wear on the battery. For example, instead of charging to 100% right away, your Mac will first charge to 80% and then wait with the remaining 20 until closer to when you typically unplug your Mac, say in the morning. Another good way to save battery is to limit notifications. Now to do this, we're gonna head to the notifications page in the settings uh, and then go through the list of apps and turn off the ones you don't need. Uh, for example, I only allow a few like mail uh, or messaging apps, everything else I turn off. This saves battery and more importantly, in my eyes, it means less distractions throughout the day. So this way, when a notification does come up, uh, you know it is something worth your attention, not say the app store asking you to subscribe to Apple Arcade. It's just not gonna happen. 
But let me know in the comments, uh, what Apple services are you subscribed to and which do you think are actually worth it? For me, I would say Apple Music uh, and more iCloud storage to back up my iPhone. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. Another good way to save battery is to change how you use Siri. Now, by default, the listen for high Siri feature will be on. And while this is good for accessing Siri using just your voice, this does mean that your Mac's microphones will be running constantly to listen for that activation phrase. And this really eats up battery over time. So my suggestion is to turn this feature off and instead use Siri by pressing the button in the top right of the menu bar. Now, most of what we look at today will be software related, but there's also some hardware. More specifically, these two fantastic three-in-one accessories for your Mac from Moft. Starting with the Snap Laptop Phone Holder, uh, as you can see, this will simply fold out and let you magnetically attach your phone to your MacBook. Now, most of the time, I like to have my iPhone uh, to the side of my display, as this is a great way to keep an eye on notifications uh, and for video conferencing. But then if say you are watching a stream, uh, you want to multitask, you can also flip it upwards. And as you can see, you can now mount your phone uh, in landscape mode. It's a little bit like having a small uh, secondary display next to your primary display. And then finally, you can also mount your phone in reverse. And this is a great way to use your uh, iPhone's main camera to share documents or say desk view uh, for video conferencing. Next is this premium three-in-one carry sleeve, and it's made from this really nice vegan leather uh, with a nice soft interior, which is a great way to, of course, protect your Mac. Uh, and what I especially like is that it actually has enough room to also house things like your MacBook's charger. But I'd say the coolest part uh, is that the sleeve also acts as a stand and lets you support up to two angles, both a 15 degree as well as a 25 degree angle. Generally speaking, uh, I find the 15 degree angle to be most comfortable to type in as we'll just slightly raise the keyboard, uh, more comfortable on your wrist, where the steeper 25 degree angle, since it raises the display, makes it more ergonomic for your back and neck, uh, makes it especially great when using your Mac uh, for many hours at a desk. If you've just got your brand new MacBook or want to add some upgrades to your current Mac for the optimal daily workflow, be sure to check out the Snap Laptop Phone Holder and the 3-in-1 Carry Sleeve. Or ideally, get both. I mean, look at this setup. Pretty cool. Anyway, guys, I'll be sure to leave all the purchase links down in the description. Okay, so we've looked at the essential settings to change. Now I want to dive into the top features of macOS and share some of my favorite tips and tricks along the way. So a great way to organize a messy desktop is with stacks. Now to activate this feature, simply right click on the desktop and then select use stacks. And as you can see, all the files on the desktop will be instantly organized by file type and grouped in what are called stacks. And this creates not only more room on your desktop, uh, meaning you can actually see your wallpaper, uh, but it also gives you a much cleaner and more organized look. And then to expand the stack, simply click it and then all the files in the stack will show to let you easily find the one you need. Uh, and then to close the stack, simply click it again to close it. On the subject of organization, in a finder window, you have what is called the sidebar. And this is a very handy way to see multiple destinations uh, on your Mac, but by default, there aren't that many listed. So to customize this, we're gonna click on finder and then preferences. And then here under sidebar, we can add or remove destinations. Now I like to have pretty much everything visible uh, as it allows me to find folders and destinations on my Mac easily to organize my files. By the way, if you go to the general tab, you can actually change the default destination shown when opening a new finder window. And what is also neat uh, is if say I have a folder like this one here on my desktop, I can click and drag that into the sidebar of the finder window. And this will then create a shortcut to more easily access that folder. Earlier, I mentioned Safari and how it is my browser of choice, but there are a few things I do to make the app even better. So first, let's open up a new Safari window. Then we're gonna click on Safari, then Preferences, and then select Tabs. And then from here, we can actually change a key setting which will determine how tabs are shown. So by default, this is set to uh, separate, but I change this to compact. Now, why is this? Well, as the name suggests, this is a more efficient way to show your different tabs, taking up less screen space, meaning you get more screen space for the websites you're browsing. Another cool feature related to tabs is say you have a website that you visit often throughout the day, you can actually permanently pin a tab to be open at all times, regardless of which Safari window you are in. Now to do this, simply take an open tab, any tab you have, drag it to the far left side of the screen. Uh, and as you can see, this will now become a more compact tab and will be visible every time you open a Safari window for quick access. And then if say you wanna remove a pin tab, simply drag it to the right out of that pin tab section uh, and then close it from there. 
Aside from the more efficient and smart layout of Safari, uh, another key reason that I use it is that all of my open tabs, bookmarks, and logins sync across all of my devices using iCloud. So I can say, have a website open on my Mac, quickly pull it up on my iPhone or iPad, and not have to worry about looking everything up again uh, or re-entering, say, login details. Super seamless. Uh, plus, Safari is also really well optimized to run on the Mac, and as a result, it uses much less RAM and battery life compared to other browsers, including Chrome. Now, I want to talk about full screen apps and split screen mode for multitasking. Now, you can open any app in full screen mode by pressing the green bubble found in the top left side of the window, uh, like here on this pages document. And then this will take the app into full screen mode, which then hides the dock and also the menu bar. Uh, and this is a great way to see more of a given app at once. And then to access full screen mode, simply move your cursor to the top of the display, wait for the menu bar to appear, and then press the green bubble once again to exit full screen mode. What is also cool uh, is you can actually press and hold the green bubble to enter split screen mode. And this is, in my opinion, the best way to run two windows or two different apps side by side on your Mac. So if we press and hold the green bubble, uh, you can actually assign the window either to the left or right side of the display and then choose a second window or app to have open alongside it. And just like that, we're now running two apps side by side on the Mac, and this is perfect for multitasking. Uh, but I also like is you can actually slide this divider in the middle to give more screen space to one app over the other. Now, I often use this feature uh, to say watch a YouTube video while I'm researching a product uh, while typing up notes for a YouTube video. If you're like me, you probably use multiple apps at a given time. For example, say uh, documents for work use and then music or YouTube videos for personal use. Now there's a great way to separate apps by using multiple desktops. Let me show you how this works. So first you wanna enter mission control and you can do this either by using uh, the hot corners that we set up earlier, or you can use a three finger swipe gesture on your trackpad and swipe upwards to enter mission control. And then from there, we can press the plus icon that you'll find in the top right hand side to add a new desktop. And from here, you can then click and drag windows from your first desktop to your second desktop and even make a third or a fourth. And this will allow you to assign apps or windows to a specific desktop. Again, I like to use my main desktop for work uh, and my secondary desktop for more personal use. And then a useful way to quickly switch between multiple desktops is a three finger swipe to the left or right side on your trackpad, or you can use the keyboard shortcut control and then the left and right arrow keys. On the subject of keyboard shortcuts, let me do a quick lightning round of some rapid fire essential keyboard shortcuts for Mac OS. So the first uh, is to press command space. We looked at this earlier. This will open spotlight and allow you to search for anything on your Mac. Uh, next is command Q and this will quit an application where command W will close just a window of an application without actually quitting it. And then what is probably my favorite keyboard shortcut on Mac OS is Command Tab. And this will give you an instant preview of all of your open apps and also allow you to quickly switch between them. So you can press the uh, tab button repeatedly to cycle between them and then quickly switch to any other open app on your Mac. To take a screenshot, you can press Command Shift 3 and this will take a full screen screenshot. Uh, by the way, screenshots are saved on the desktop. And then if say you wanna capture just a portion of the display, you can press Command Shift 4 and then click and drag to select a specific area. This is great for say, uh, taking a screenshot of a window or say a paragraph in an article. And there you have it. Those are my top settings, uh, features, and top tips and tricks for any new Mac user. If this video helped you out, guys, be sure to leave a like and comment on this video as it really helps out the channel. And be sure to subscribe to see more tech videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.